Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. In this video, we're going to be solving an argument problem. Actually, the thumbnail said draw or can you draw because we're going to draw something. Oh, it's already drawn, but I'm just going to show you the drawing and I'll tell you what I'm talking about. But this is an argument problem because it has the ARG, which stands for the argument of a complex number. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a definition. If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos where I go over basics of complex numbers. Or of course, a bunch of different types of problems, different levels of problems. Now, this problem could probably be considered a medium level problem, maybe even though I'm not sure. It doesn't look that basic. So, you know, if you're new, start with the basics, of course, so you don't get frustrated. Now, argument is basically the angle. When we have a complex number, we can plot it in the complex plane, which is also called the, the argand plane. An argand plane is just basically the xy plane, uh, which is just kind of labeled differently. Uh, the x-axis represents the real part, and the y-axis represents the imaginary part. A complex number z is made up of a real part and an imaginary part. If you write it as x plus y, I sorry, a plus b, i, we're not going to use u in this problem because this is kind of like a locus problem. Again, I'm going to tell you what locus problems are. Uh, we would like to use z uh, equals x plus y, i. It's better for uh, many reasons. So in this case, uh, we have a complex number, let's just say it's like this, and of course it is going to make an angle, right? And we usually express it in radians, and in this case we want it to be pi over 4. And in this case, I mean this particular drawing that I made is probably not pi over 4, right? It's not drawn to scale, obviously. It's probably something more like pi over 6. But that's not our argument, I just wanted to show you. Or if you want, we can call that just... Uh, theta for general purposes, okay? So theta is the argument, and how do you find theta? So if you have z equals x plus y i, the argument of z is theta, and we know that tangent theta is equal to y over x, because a complex number can be written as the absolute value times x over the absolute value plus the y over the absolute value, because when you distribute, you're going to get x plus y i. And then this, these just happen to be the cosine of theta, and this is the sine of theta from a right triangle. And when you divide the sine by cosine, you get the tangent, which is y over x. Make sense? Anyways, I kind of gave you a quick summary, but go ahead and check out the details in the lecture videos. Well, tangent theta is y over x, but what is theta, if you ask me? There's multiple answers depending on theta, depending on the, coordinate, um, the quadrant. But in general, theta can be expressed as arctangent uh, y over x, or maybe uh, pi plus this or pi minus that. Again, depending on the co coordinate system, depending on the quadrant, let's just assume for simplicity's sake that uh, we're in the first quadrant, right? And it's, it'll be this one. Cool. So far, so good. Now, how do we use that information? We don't have the argument of z, we have the argument of z minus i. So z was modified. What is, uh, what does this do? Like when you subtract i from a number, how do you subtract it? It's like adding negative i to it. So you can think of complex numbers as vectors and take a complex number z, and then of course negative i is also another vector, which can be drawn like this. So it's, let's say this is z, this is negative i, and z minus i would be equivalent to z plus negative i, which is the sum of these two, and then it's probably going to look like this, right? And then you're talking about the argument of this new vector, but what is that supposed to mean? This is kind of complicated, that's why I'm not a big fan of vectors in linear algebra. I know linear algebra is being used, but that's one of my least favorite subjects in math. Do you want to know what the other one is? Okay. Maybe I can tell you later if you remind me in the comment section. Okay, so maybe some people already know, but let's keep it a secret for now. All right, great. So let's see how we can handle this without getting into vectors, because vectors are boring, in my opinion. Again, I could be wrong, right? So we're going to go ahead and 
set this equal to pi over 4 and replace z with x plus yi. That's going to give us argument of x plus, since uh, y, i, and i have a common factor, we can factor it out and end up with something like this. If you want, you can call this something else, like you can call this z, um, not z, z is not a good choice, but probably b, and then you get x plus b i, no big deal. Here's the thing. We have a new complex number, which is x plus y minus 1 i, and its argument is pi over 4. What's that supposed to mean? So your complex number has an argument of pi over 4, which is, by the way, 45 degrees, and that means the following. Its real and imaginary parts are equal, but notice that the imaginary part is not y, it's actually y minus 1. So this is y minus 1, and totally ignore the x and y axes here. And this is pi over 4. Guess what that means? That means you're in the first quadrant. Nice. And x is equal to y minus 1. Seriously? Is that the case? How is that possible? Well, the real and imaginary parts are supposed to be equal. That's how you get a isosceles right triangle, right? It's 45, 45, 90 triangle. Come on, people, right? That's what it is. So we get x equals y minus 1, which means what? It means that y minus 1 equals x, and y can be expressed as y, I mean y can be expressed as x plus 1. So this basically represents a line, and let's talk about locus problems. Locus problems are basically, they give you an equation either with absolute values or arguments or something like that, and you try to find the set of complex number z that satisfy that equation. So you basically get a family of solutions, which can usually be expressed like uh, by a curve or a line or a circle or any other shape, right? In this case, it happens to be a straight line, but there are some limitations. And let's talk about those real quick because I also need to show you something at the end, right? To prove my point. But here's the thing. We said that, okay, we are in the first quadrant, right? But how is that possible? X needs to be positive, right? And Y minus 1 needs to be positive because they're both in the first quadrant. And that implies that Y is greater than 1. That kind of makes sense, though, because Y is X plus 1. If X is greater than 0, Y needs to be greater than 1. Under those conditions, what can we do? Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph because the graph will tell you everything. A graph is worth a thousand words. Was it a picture? Well, a graph is a picture anyway. So here's the thing. We have y equals x plus 1, a straight line, but x needs to be positive, which automatically implies y being greater than 1 because that has to happen. So we have an open dot even though Desmos doesn't show it, and I think Wolfram Alpha does not show it either. In other words, this is a ray. The solution is a ray, just like the ray from or rays from the sun. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.